Hello beautiful souls, my name is Jessie and welcome back to another episode of Rewired to Inspire. This show where we'll dive into self-love, learn tangible ways to rewire the brain and discovering your soul's purpose. The goal of Rewired to Inspire is to encourage listeners to begin doing the hard work, to get curious and open to maximizing your life. Our mindset shapes how we live. Depending on life events, traumas, and personal experiences, our mindsets are all vastly different. However, one thing we all have in common is the ability to rewire our mind, to change the narrative, and to pivot our lives. I hope you leave each episode with the belief that you are so worthy to live a life true to you. I look forward to chatting with you every single Tuesday and Thursday and helping you grow exponentially in all areas of your life. Without further ado, here's today's episode. Hello, beautiful souls, and welcome back to my podcast, Rewire to Inspire. I am your host, Jesse Brown, and I am super excited to be jumping on the microphone with you all for episode number 153. If you missed my last episode, number 152, it was two questions to ask yourself to realign your life. Okay, before we dive into today's episode, I need to say the biggest thank you. So if you're watching today's episode on YouTube, hi, it's so, so lovely to connect with each and every one of you. I started posting video content on YouTube of my podcast a couple of months ago, and we've been slowly growing on that platform. And I am just so thankful for each and every one of you that have been commenting, that have been subscribing, that have been tuning in. And if you're listening to audio and you didn't know that I have a YouTube channel, I will link it in the show notes below. And I would love for you to check that out if that is an alignment for you. I am definitely someone who enjoys watching video versions of podcasts whenever I can, because I love to be able to see the host, to engage with the host. And I just feel like There's something about watching video that you're just able to connect a little bit more. However, I do also love listening to audio because it's very convenient when you are out for a walk or when you're driving, when you're at the gym, whatever it is. But you guys, just thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. I have so much gratitude and I shed a couple tears of gratitude this morning when I was reading some comments and looking through my analytics on YouTube. I was quite blown away. So just again, thank you so, so much. If this is your first time tuning in to Rewire to Inspire, welcome. I am so excited to have you here. This is a platform where we talk all about trauma healing and inner child work, maximizing our potential and just rewiring how we view mental health, how we view personal growth, how we view our relationship with ourselves. My main word, if I could think of one word to encompass what I truly believe is my purpose and mission on this earth, it is around rewiring and framing how we view self-love, how we tend to ourself, how we embody ourselves and celebrate ourselves, as someone who has struggled with self-love her whole life and still does in many ways, shapes and forms. I know that that message is more important now than ever to be sharing and to be cultivating and embracing and knowing that if I can inspire even one of you and you can feel a little bit better and then you can pass that on to someone else, I know that we can create this beautiful ripple effect of just us beginning to celebrate and own who we are as individuals instead of feeling like crap all the time because we compare ourselves to other people endlessly. So I hope you just take a moment to thank yourself. Thank yourself for showing up. Thank yourself for being here and thank yourself for being awesome and for being who you are because who you are is exactly who you are supposed to be and what the world needs you to be. So I hope you just take a moment to validate that for yourself. Today's episode, we are going to talk about five lessons that I have learned so far. And I was going to, on the end of that, say during my personal development journey and in, in my early twenties, I'm only 24. So I'm very much still learning things each and every day, but I genuinely believe that these are five lessons that I've learned that I have learned early in life. And I want to share them with you in the hopes that maybe a, they can inspire you to lean into one of these. They can, I can teach you something new. So without further ado, let's dive into these five lessons that I've learned so far. I'm just going to say in my life, the first lesson that I have learned and I embody every single day is that you can't expect to have certain results without putting in the work. 
furthermore to this, you cannot expect to have differences, shifts, improvements in your life if you are still investing time, energy, money, resources, whatever, into persons, places, things, and ideas that are holding you back from the version of yourself that you want to become. And I wrote this one down because we unfortunately live in a world where we are brainwashed a lot of the times that results are easy. There's quick fixes to everything. And we are creatures of wanting that quick fix, that short term pleasure. We are wired in the way to want things that are easy. We are not designed to endure and to cultivate hard, challenging experiences, AKA having grit, having discipline, having commitment. Here's what I want you to know. It is all a sales pitch. It is bullshit. It is brainwashing you and it is tricking you into thinking that the results that you aspire for are going to be easy. We see this all the time with health. We see this with money, right? Where we're like, Oh, I can just buy this program and have abs in in six days. Or, oh, if I join this company, I can be a millionaire in six months. Unfortunately, that's not how it works. And I do not want anybody to feel bad if you are someone who has kind of gone for one of these things or you've believed one of these tactics because you're not alone in that. And the reason that I wanted to share this point is because I used to be someone as well who would try to find the easy road. And in a society now where we can literally just go on chat GPT or whatever and ask it anything and have instant answers, we live in a world that feeds us that very fast paced results, answers, etc. And so of course, we're going to begin to form a negative relationship with hard work, with showing up consistently. But here's what I want you to know. You cannot expect to get the results that you desire and that you see on the media without putting in the work. You can't bounce around it. And inevitably, there should be a part of you that shouldn't want results without putting in the work. I can only speak for myself and that reigns true for me. I don't want to just be handed anything. I would never want to just be handed a successful life. And again, insert how you would quantify and how you would measure being successful. But to me, that means you're not learning anything. To me, putting in hard work to aspire towards the things you desire may, is what makes it all worth it. I know that when I achieve my goals, it's because I put in the work every single day to get there. But I don't want you guys to be fooled because it's out there all the time, every day, and this is not slowing down, that you can get the results you want without putting in the work. It's not true. It's not sustainable. And I just want to be open and honest about that, that in order to achieve the results that you really want, you're going to have to put in the work. And I want you to know that that is a beautiful thing. That is how we grow. That is how we evolve. And that's how you make your results worth it and put your unique flavor into it. If you just get the results without putting in the work, there's really nothing to celebrate or to feel good about. And so that is my first lesson that I have learned very, very early in life is that anything that you aspire to become, to be, to grow, to elevate, whatever, you're going to have to work towards it. And I think that that's a large reason why people give up so early is because they think in advance it's going to be easier than it is. You should probably presuppose in advance that if you have big goals or aspirations or something you're going towards, it's not going to be easy and it's not supposed to be easy, but that doesn't mean that you can't do it. In fact, it's challenging because it shows that only those that are truly committed will get there and that can be you, but you have to tell your mind and be willing to show up even when you don't want to, especially when you don't want to. Okay. Number two, and I love this one. I've done episodes specifically on this. I have the book behind me. And those of you who've been following for a while probably know what I'm going to say. It's around the compound effect. We vastly underestimate the beautiful power that is the compound effect. If you don't know what the compound effect is, basically I'm going to use an analogy that is very, very used. And that is around the magic penny. So if someone were to ask you, Hey, I will either give you a million dollars today 
or a penny that will double in value every day for the next 30 days, which would you choose? Most people's brains would go, I'll take the million dollars today. Duh, that's easy. The compound effect, however, says that if you allowed that penny to double in value every single day for 30 days, you would actually end up five times ahead. You would have over $5 million at the end of those 30 days. Insert thing here in life that is compounding either positively for you or negatively for you. Our health, our finances, our business, everything in life is a compound effect. It's like when you wake up one morning and you're just like, oh, I've put on the weight. You didn't put it on overnight. This has been a compound of time. The same when we try to get into shape. We'll go to the gym for two weeks, we don't see results, and we're like, well, I'm not seeing results, so I'm just going to give up. We need to know that things happen beneath the surface, even if we don't realize that they're happening. The compound effect is, it works exactly in that way. And I've found this to be true more so than ever with my podcast. Again, today's episode is 153. At the beginning of podcasting, the compound effect was just in the beginning. There wasn't a lot of momentum. There wasn't a lot of content. Now, when I get a new listener, because I have so much content, that compound effect is byproducting so much that I'm able to see it now. And it's gonna just continue to cultivate and grow as I continue to produce content and as I continue to grow. But I want you to think of what it is in your life that you are undervaluing the concept of the compound effect. Maybe it is investing your money. Maybe it's your time. Do you realize the compound of your time when invested in the wrong person's places, things, and ideas? It catches up to us. But again, because we can be very short-term thinkers and we're in the moment and we're present and we're only focused on short-term pleasure a lot of the time, it's hard for us to see the effects of the compound effect until we're later in life or until we have a comparison and we're like, oh, shoot. I wish I would have shown up differently. I wish if I would have known this, I would have shown up differently. So I encourage every single person to read The Compound Effect by Darren Hardy. It is one of the best books in the whole wide world. It is a very quick read. I read it in under two hours. Phenomenal, phenomenal book. Anytime I need to recenter myself, realign myself, I will pick up that book. I will read through it again. And it just reminds me of the power of showing up every single day of 1% improvements, of just continuing to maintain momentum. As soon as we take our foot off the gas and we stop, that is when momentum in the compound effect stops. So that is the second lesson that I have learned so far in life is the benefits, the power, the magic that is the compound effect. Okay, number three. And I love how these are kind of very widespread. They're not just growth oriented, they're just like things that I've learned in life. My friend listening, not everybody is going to make you happy. Not everybody is going to like you. Not everybody is going to accept you. Not everybody is going to support you, encourage you, uplift you. You are not meant for everybody. And that's okay. My God, I spent so much of my life especially in middle school and high school. And now I'm embodying, educating our youth about this, of the importance of knowing that not every person is your people. And that's okay. We don't have to have everybody like us. And that doesn't make you less of a person. That just means that they're not your people. But we're so good at focusing on all the negativity and the people that don't support us and don't like us, that we lose sight of all the people around us that do love us, that do support us, that do encourage us, that will be there with us through it all. But because we're wired to focus on the negative, I know that this is easier said than done, but I want you to know that not everybody is gonna like you. But here's the thing that's empowering when you think about it. Do you like every single person you've ever met? No. No, and that's okay. You also don't need to love and like every person you meet. Do I think we need to be respectful of everybody that we encounter because that's a reflection of us? Yes, 100%. However, you need to know in advance that not everybody is going to support you. If you are starting a business, if you are 
starting anything you're passionate about and you just have this expectation that everybody is going to support you, newsflash, they won't. I learned this very, very, very quickly when I started my business and I started my podcast. I had all these friends that were very supportive. As soon as I started to embody my passions and hone in on what I wanted to do in life, very quickly I could hear crickets. Those people were no longer supporting me. In fact, they became envious. And I started to feel the pressure of that. And it took me a while to instead continue to lean into my passions and get toxic people out of my life. What I did is I allowed it to shut me down. Is I was like, yeah, you're right. I shouldn't do this. Yeah, this is stupid. Yeah, no one will care. No, I won't be successful. Fuck that. Dude, if there's anybody in your life right now that is trying to hinder you from your growth and your passions and your expansion and what you love and aspire to do in life, get them out of your corner. Those are not your people. I am telling you right now with every ounce of me that every person in my life right now is supportive, is kind, is respectful, is loving. I'm not joking. I've had to get out of relationships, out of friendships. I've had to have boundaries with family. That's okay. You do not have to apologize for doing what's best for you. Okay? I didn't write that one down, but God, I wish I did. Because we are so good at apologizing for being who we are, for embodying who we are, and feeling bad when other people feel bad. That's their own stuff that they need to work through. If anybody is envious and jealous of you, that's because there's a part of them that wishes they were more like you. If people are talking about you in a negative way and you know that you did nothing wrong and you were just embodying yourself, obviously all of this is circumstantial. There's two sides to every story, whatever. But if you know that you were just following your passion and people are not supportive of that, my love, that is not for you to try and fix. They're not worth it. I'm telling you, they're not worth it. God, I wish I would have embodied and realized that for myself a little bit sooner. I can remember spending countless nights crying, crushed, overwhelmed, beating myself up because I wasn't getting the approval of these people in my life that in hindsight weren't meant to be in my life. And now that I've removed all of those toxic people, I don't apologize for anything anymore. We have these expectations of what we think people should be like, what we think they should do. And it's often a reflection of how we would be, right? I know that I know that I know that I would never tear someone down if they were going after something. In fact, I coached for a year to inspire people to go after the things that they want to become and encouraging them to grow and encouraging them to embody that. I want to be that cheerleader for each and every person. But again, then because I have that belief for myself, I expect other people to do the same. Sorry, I expected other people to do the same. And sometimes people just want to be happy for you. But when we are miserable and in a dark place and in a low place in our life, sometimes it can be a little bit harder to be happy for other people. And that's okay. I've been in that place too, where I found myself envious of other people's results. And so this is a lot of self accountability and self-awareness of looking within to also be like, hey, am I that friend that's really not being very supportive? Have I not been the best support system for the people around me? And know that that's okay. All we can do is bring awareness to that for ourselves, validate that and correct. That is okay. Again, I have been that person too. It's okay, but we need to shift it. But I want you to know that if there's something that you want to go after and your biggest reasoning for not doing it is fear of being judged, know that that is the number one human fear that we have. Fear of perception of other people. Yet, think of all the great people in life that are quote unquote successful, that have made a difference, that are influential. You don't think they had people telling them that they couldn't, that they shouldn't? Of course they did. It's those who persevere through that. You don't see the people oftentimes at the beginning of their journey. You see it after they have massive results and then you're like, oh, I could never be like that. You have to just start and know that if nobody's gonna support you, you need to be there to support yourself and trust in your own abilities and your own aspirations because you are worthy of it, okay? And know that the right people will support you, but we have to get rid of those in our life that aren't and that are hindering 
our growth and hindering the progress that we know we want to make in our hearts. Okay, number four. Oh God, we're going heavy today. Oh my God. Also, I'm getting a new office chair soon. So hopefully this background squeakiness that you guys have been hearing for the last um, two years <laughs> can slowly start to go away because it's super annoying for you. It's super annoying for me. And it's really not great for my back. So anyways, a little side tangent. Number four, you are the only one responsible to heal your past and to put in the work. Why are we so good at blaming the world for our pain? And listen, I get it. It's a lot easier to be mad at the world. It's a lot easier to be mad at the people that have hurt you. But here's the thing. I encourage you to ask yourself who and what do you need to forgive? I have a YouTube video coming out this week and it is all about that. It's not a podcast episode, it's a little bonus. So again, another shameless plug for YouTube. But it's who the hell do you need to forgive? What do you need to heal? I'm starting therapy again this week and I'm super excited because I know that I have a lot of things in my life that I've suppressed, that I've told myself is fine, but I notice it leaking out in little areas of my life. And those little leaks start to add up. They compound, if you will. And I'm like, Jesse, you are the only one responsible to heal this. You cannot blame those people that put that pain on you and just hate on them forever. You have to go do the work. You need to go store these memories and traumas appropriately so that you can show up as the best version of yourself, the best partner, the best future mom, the best sibling, the best friend, whatever. It is your responsibility, my love listening, to heal those parts of you. We all have things in our past. We all have pain. And obviously there's a spectrum of this, of what you've dealt with in your life. But you are the only one responsible for making shifts and for healing in your life. Furthermore, outside of just the trauma lens, I see all the time people saying, well, I didn't learn that in school. So like they should have taught me that. This mindset of should have, that should have happened. They should have done that. How about how can I do that now? How can I learn that now? How can I make a difference now? So much of life is about changing our mindset, changing our perception. I wrote this one down because it's one that drives me insane. Because when I see people just blaming the world, I'm like, oh my God, I get it. I get it so deeply. I've spent years of my life just blaming everybody around me for all the pain that I felt in my life. Because it feels good to blame other people, right? And when I say forgive, I don't mean forgive in the way of, I forgive you, like it's fine. But it's a way to release and let go. I'm not forgiving you for you. I'm forgiving you for me so I can continue on with my life. After my basketball experience, I remember my therapist asked me, are you ready to forgive your coach? I was like, hell no, I don't forgive him. Why would I forgive him for the shit that he put me through, for the pain that he caused me? I don't forgive him. And then as time went on, I'm like, you know what? I do, I do forgive him, but I don't forgive him in the way that if I seen him, I'd be like, I forgive you, we're cool. I forgive him because it allows me to be free. Self accountability and taking responsibility for your life is the only way that you will ever live a happy life. You can spend your whole life blaming the world, blaming other people, but know that the responsibility of how you show up and how you live, that only lies within you. And until you know that and embody that and believe that and trust that and live in that way, you will constantly be let down. I know that it can be hard. Again, I always like to approach my podcast from a trauma-informed perspective. I understand it can be hard. I understand it can be frustrating. So lean on a mental health professional if you need to. In fact, I encourage you to. I encourage everybody to go to therapy. Let's have a therapy party. It's the best. I love therapy, even though I've been neglecting it for a while because it's scary and I get that it's scary. 
but it's also the best place that we can be so that we can become a better version of ourselves so we stop passing on our trauma to the next generations and we can become healthier individuals. Tell me you're passionate about therapy without telling me you're passionate about therapy. Anyways, that's number four, you guys. The responsibility is yours. The ball is in your court. Do with that what you will. I know that it's hard. I know that it takes time. But I also know that the only way that you can be free and truly cultivate a magnificent life is when you begin to identify for yourself that you are the only one responsible to heal and to put in the work. Okay, let's end on a happier note. Number five, last but not least, I love this one. And I hope that this one inspires you. You're capable and worthy of so much more than you validate and you give yourself credit for. Even just saying that question, I wonder what's coming up for you. You're capable and worthy of so much more than you give yourself credit for. I hope you realize that. We all have exponentially more worth and capabilities than we could ever know. But our mind tries to tell us and convince us that that's not true. What if your mind is wrong? What if those limiting thoughts is just low self-worth and belief from your past? What if that's your trauma bias coming in and saying, we could never do that. We're not worthy of that. I could never be that. Why couldn't you? That is my question. Why couldn't you? If the person beside you can, your best friend can, why couldn't you? I want you to know that you're so much more capable and worthy because this is the one that strives me every single day. There was zero part of me that thought I was capable of making 153 episodes of a podcast, not even a little bit. Here's the thing. I didn't start here. I started with one episode and then I learned a lesson and then I did two episodes and then I learned some more lessons and then I did a third episode and I just kept putting one foot in front of the other. And let me tell you, I fell on my face a lot and I still do a lot. But it's been through that that I've shown myself how much more capable I am than I could have ever realized. If there's an area of your life that you are curious about maximizing, curious about even just exploring, start by just putting one foot in front of the other. Knowing that should you take responsibility, get those people out of your life that aren't supporting you, believe in the compound effect and put in the hard work. It's kind of all these lessons together have kind of led to this one, which I did not plan on. You might prove yourself wrong and you might be surprised with yourself. Don't keep wishing things were different. The only way that you will improve at something is to show up and to try. It is to take action. You will not get results without taking action, but I promise you that you are so much more capable than you think and you give yourself credit for. And I guarantee you there is some experience in the past that has formed this belief for you that that's not true. The only way that you can change that is through exposing yourself and through trying and feeling the pain and feeling the discomfort and pushing and striving through it. So those are my top five lessons that I have learned so far in life. And I'm still learning and trying to embody each and every day. I have not perfected these. These are just lessons that I've learned and I'm still leaning into them each and every day. So I want you to know that that's okay. No matter where you're at, I encourage you to just notice which one of these stuck out to you the most and how can you begin to shed light and awareness on that one and start with just that one. I'm beginning to just realize how much we overcomplicate things and we overwhelm ourselves and that is what makes us step back and we get fearful and we shut down. Start small and build. You don't have to jump to the top of the mountain. Walk your way there and take off your backpack and sit down every now and again if it gets to be too hard, but do not turn around and go back down. Keep going. You're so worthy, you're so capable, and I just believe in you so, so much. I don't think there's a person on the face of the earth that I couldn't say, I don't believe in you. And so if you need to have a little of that in your life, I hope you know that I believe in you. 
and I see you and I validate you and I hope you know how proud I am of you for everything that you've overcome, for getting here and for continuing to show up. So thank you guys so, so much as always for tuning into today's episode of Rewired to Inspire. If you enjoyed today's episode, it would mean the world to me if you could either subscribe if you are on YouTube, if you could hit that plus button, if you are listening to audio, if you could leave me a review, leave me a comment, whatever it is. I absolutely love connecting with each and every one of you and building this community. So all the love you guys, happiest of Tuesdays, and I look forward to chatting with y'all on Thursday. Bye, you guys. Thank you all so, so much for tuning into today's episode of Rewired to Inspire. I absolutely love connecting with you all, so make sure you're following me on Instagram. I am at jessiebrown13. If you enjoyed today's episode, please feel free to leave a review or share with someone you think would enjoy. I look forward to chatting with you all next episode. And remember, get out of your head and into your heart.